Welcome to Weekly News Highlights, where we wrap up your week with a glimpse back into what went on over the past week. I'm Kim Dami in Seoul. South Korea forged fresh diplomatic ties with Cuba for the first time. And North Korea also said a summit between Pyongyang and Tokyo is possible as long as the regime's nuclear and missile development and abduction issues don't get in the way. North Korea claimed on Thursday that the cruise missile firing detected by the South Korean military the previous day was a test launch of its new surface-to-sea missile named Pada Suri-6. Wednesday's launch marked the regime's fifth cruise missile launch this year alone. Also this week, a merger between Korean Air and Asian Airlines was given conditional approval from the EU. Now, only approval from the U.S. is pending out of the 14 countries that needed to approve Korean Air's acquisition of Asian Airlines. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's sister Kim Yo-jong said this week, Pyongyang is open to softening its relations with Tokyo. The regime even noted inviting the Japanese leader to the north could be on the table. Let's first turn to our Choi Min-jong. Kim Yo-jong, the sister of North Korea's leader, expressed optimistic intentions regarding improving ties with Japan a day after South Korea forged diplomatic ties with Cuba. According to the regime's state-run Korean Central News Agency on Thursday, Kim said that Pyongyang and Tokyo can open a new future together if Japan makes a political decision to improve relations. The remarks came after Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida last week said that he feels a strong need to change the current relations between the two sides and that related activities are currently taking place. Kishida last May had also expressed a desire to meet with Kim Jong-un. Kim Yo-jong added that Kishida's visit to North Korea might happen on the condition that Japan is willing to leave the past abduction of Japanese citizens off the table. Relations between Pyongyang and Tokyo have long been sour, as Japan claims that 17 of its citizens were abducted by North Korea in the 1970s and 80s, and that 12 still remain in the North. North Korea argues that the issue has already been settled, saying that eight have died and the remaining four were never kidnapped. Experts say the remarks could be intended to counter South Korea's recent establishment of diplomatic ties with Cuba, a longtime ally of North Korea. Seeking cooperation with Japan could provide North Korea with a breakthrough as its diplomatic isolation in the international community is becoming increasingly severe. I believe the North intends to counter the establishment of diplomatic relations between South Korea and Cuba with a cooperative relationship with Japan while strengthening the hostile relationship with South Korea. Kim Yo-jong, however, stressed that her remarks were solely her personal opinion. She added that the regime's leadership still has no plans to repair relations with Japan and that it remains to be seen what Kishida's intentions are in the future. Choi Min-jong, Arirang News. In a surprise announcement on Wednesday night, South Korea said it had formed diplomatic relations with Cuba, a longtime ally of North Korea. Now, the news is not the best news for North Korea, as it will further ostracize the North from world stage. We have our foreign affairs correspondent, Pei Eun-ji, for details. Welcome back, Eun-ji. Thanks for having me. So, Eun-ji, South Korea had a long pursuit to add Cuba to its diplomatic list, and finally they've made it official. What significance does that carry? Well, it has a lot more meaning than simply adding another country to the list. Seoul's foreign ministry even said it marks a crucial turning point for South Korea. The establishment of diplomatic relations with Cuba, the only country in the Central American and Caribbean region with which we did not have diplomatic ties, is expected to serve as an important turning point in our efforts to strengthen diplomacy in the Latin American region. As we just heard, the communist-run island was the only country in Latin America that did not have diplomatic relations with South Korea. Bilateral exchanges had been cut off after Fidel Castro seized power in a 1959 revolution. For the past 20 years, the South Korean government has worked on improving relations with Cuba. Growing popularity of Korean culture such as K-pop and K-dramas in Cuba in recent years also added momentum, eventually leading to formal diplomatic ties. Among the UN member states, Syria is now left as the only country that does not have diplomatic ties with South Korea. Right, and Cuba and North Korea have come a long way, going back as far as the Cold War. Now, the news have, must have been a 
shock for North Korea. Right, Cuba has been and continues to be one of North Korea's closest allies. North Korea established diplomatic ties with Cuba in 1960, and Cuba still has an embassy in Pyongyang. With South Korea and Cuba agreeing to open diplomatic relations, the North is expected to become more isolated on the global stage. In fact, a senior official from the presidential office told reporters on Thursday that North Korea will, will inevitably face a political and psychological blow as a result of the establishment. Right, and I hear the announcement had been kept secret until the last minute. They even decided on the exact hour and minute when to make the deal public, right? That's right. The UN administration appears to have pushed ahead with the process in a low-key manner for the past two years, considering Cuba's close relationship with North Korea. Only a very few relevant officials were aware that the diplomatic relations would be newly established, and this was not disclosed to other authorities or to the media in advance to prevent North Korea from interrupting. Then what does South Korea hope to uh, achieve from its improved ties with Cuba then? Well, first, the country hopes to expand economic cooperation with Cuba. Seoul's foreign ministry said the new diplomatic ties are expected to help support Korean companies to do business in Cuba. As of 2022, the trade volume between the two countries amounted to approximately $14 million in exports and $7 million in imports. Also, Seoul aims to provide consular assistance to Koreans visiting Cuba, making it easier to obtain visas. Around 14,000 Koreans visited Cuba annually before the pandemic. And there are about 1,000 people descended from Koreans who moved to Mexico in 1921 during Japan's colonial rule, currently living in Cuba. The South Korean government plans to further discuss follow-up measures with the Cuban government, such as the issue of building an embassy there. Certainly a lot to look forward to from economic cooperation to cultural collaboration. That's right. All right, Indy, thank you so much for the coverage today. My pleasure. Also this week, North Korea test fired a new surface to sea missile on Wednesday, calling the missile Pada Suri 6. Having overseen the testing, the leader Kim Jong un urged the strengthening of its defense posture near the western inter Korean maritime border. Our Kim Min Jong has the details. North Korea test-fired a new surface-to-sea missile on Wednesday morning under the supervision of its leader Kim Jong-un. The regime's state-run Korean Central News Agency reported Thursday that Pyongyang test-launched its new missile named Padasuri-6. The missile reportedly flew for 1,400 seconds, a little over 23 minutes, over waters in the East Sea to hit a target. Considering the flight time, the missile is estimated to have flown around 200 kilometers. Experts believe the Padasuri-6 is an upgrade of North Korea's version of Russia's KH-35 Uran anti-ship missile. Following the North's report, South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff expressed confidence in countering North Korea's threats. Our military is thoroughly equipped to detect and intercept North Korea's missiles against South Korea. Kim also ordered a stronger military defense posture in waters north of South Korea's Yeonpyeong and Pyongyangdo Islands along the western maritime border. Kim's order comes as he accused South Korean warships of frequently invading its waters by defending the northern limit line, the de facto inter-Korean maritime border, which the regime does not recognize. The North Korean leader warned that Pyongyang would regard the South's violation as an infringement of its sovereignty and an act of military provocation, leading to the use of force. South Korea's military, however, reiterated that the NLL will remain unchanged. The NLL is our military's unchanging maritime border, and our military will be fully prepared to respond resolutely to any provocation. Seoul's military detected the latest launch at around 9 a.m. Wednesday. This is the regime's fifth cruise missile launch this year. Choi min Dong, Arirang News. On top of conventional threats, the North's cyber crimes are becoming more of a concern. South Korea's intel agency spotted North Koreans who have been making illegal gambling sites and selling them to South Koreans. Our North Korean affairs correspondent Kim jong sil reports. Some details of the North's mysterious Office 39 were brought out into the open on Wednesday. 
Kyungung Information Technology Company Limited is the name of a company that makes illegal gambling sites and sells them to South Korean cyber criminals. South Korea's National Intelligence Service said Wednesday that the company operates in Dandong City, China, and is under the supervision of Office 39, one of the mysterious organizations under the Workers' Party of Korea. Office 39 is known to raise and manage the money in leader Kim Jong-un's personal slush fund. In addition, the NIS released information on key members of the office. Kim Gwang-myung, 45, the leader of the operation, is a member of North Korea's Reconnaissance General Bureau in charge of actions against South Korea. He leads 15 members. Chong Liu Song, 39, is in charge of developing cyber gambling sites and ad ranking manipulation programs. And 28 year old Chun Won Nook develops illegal gambling sites. The NIS stated that these individuals would make and sell various software, such as that for gambling sites for adults and teens, and were each sending $500 per person monthly to Pyongyang. They had stolen Chinese IDs and, pretending to be Chinese developers, looked for jobs online. This is because UN Security Council resolutions ban North Koreans from getting jobs overseas as the money they earn can be used to further develop the regime's nuclear capabilities. South Korean cyber criminals were working with the North Koreans because the price was cheaper and they could communicate with each other in Korean. The NIS said this was concrete proof that North Korea is deeply involved in South Korea's rising criminal cyber gambling. The country's National Gambling Control Commission announced last year that revenue from illegal gambling in the country had increased by 20 trillion Korean won, or about 15 billion U.S. dollars, in just three years. Kim Jong-sil, Arirang News. North Korea is also keeping one of its allies, Russia, closer than ever. From apparent arms deals to economic and cultural cooperation. Just last week, 100 Russian tourists visited Pyongyang on a ski trip. Our Kim jong sil also covered this story. North Korea has opened its arms to tourists from Russia. According to a Facebook post by the Russian embassy in Pyongyang, 100 Russian tourists arrived in the North's capital on February 9th. The embassy said this was the first visit after North Korea opened its borders following a four-year closure due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The tourists included representatives of the tourism industry and media and travelers from all over Russia, from Kaliningrad to Vladivostok. It added the tourists will stay in the north for four days and get acquainted with key attractions in Pyongyang while visiting the Mashingmyong Ski Resort, known as one of the most modern major ski resorts the regime built. The recent hype in Pyongyang-Moscow exchanges hasn't stopped there. On Monday, a delegation of the regime's ruling party officials left Pyongyang to visit Russia. North Korea's official newspaper Rodong Shinmun reported Tuesday that the delegation is on the trip at the invitation of Russia's ruling United Russia Party. The delegation plans to attend an international inter-party forum organized by the Russian party. A senior official at South Korea's Unification Ministry told reporters on Tuesday the government has no comment on ordinary interactions between Pyongyang and Moscow, but added that any illegal interactions such as arms transfers or labor dispatches will need to stop as they violate the UN Security Council resolutions. Moscow and Pyongyang have been strengthening ties ever since North Korean leader Kim Jong-un made a rare overseas trip to meet Russian President Vladimir Putin last September. Kim Jong-sil, Arirang News. Doctors at the top five big hospitals here in South Korea say they will hand in their resignation and, in fact, stop working as of 6 a.m. on the 20th. That collective decision came right after staging nationwide rallies against a med school quota hike on Thursday. Lee seung has more. In response to the government's decision to increase the medical school admissions quota by 2,000 to over 5,000 by 2025, Residents at five major hospitals in Seoul announced they will take collective action. According to the Korean Intern Resident Association on Friday, as a result of discussions with residents at the so-called Big Five hospitals, all residents at those hospitals will submit their resignations by the 19th and will stop working after 6 a.m. on the 20th. The Big Five hospitals refer to Seoul National University Hospital, Seoul Azan Medical Center, Catholic University of Korea's Seoul St. Mary's Hospital, Severance Hospital, and Samsung Medical Center. 
The decision to hand in their resignation comes as Kira and Big Five representatives urgently discussed measures to respond to the government plans from 11 p.m. Thursday to 2 a.m. Friday. Some of the participating hospitals have already confirmed that all of their residents already agreed to hand in their resignation letters. The association said it would form an emergency response committee with representatives from the hospitals participating in the collective action to see if all teaching hospitals would participate in submitting resignation letters as well. Meanwhile, if collective action goes ahead as planned, it would mark the fourth time doctors have taken such action since the first medical strike in 2000. As of last year, it was reported that there were about 2,700 residents working at the Big Five hospitals. On Thursday, the government stated that it would not back down despite continued warnings, saying that the collective action by doctors opposing the expansion of medical schools was an act of using patients as tools for their own greed. Lee seung Arirang News. According to a South Korean state-run think tank, the country's economy is expected to expand 2.2 percent this year on the back of a strong recovery in chip exports. However, weak consumer spending due to high interest rates is still a lingering factor. Our economics correspondent Lee Soo Jin has more. The Korea Development Institute has maintained its economic outlook estimate for this year at 2.2 percent. In its revised forecast published Wednesday, the South Korean state-run economic think tank kept its outlook unchanged from its November 2023 estimate. The KDI, which typically releases economic outlook comprehensive reports in May and November, also released two additional revised forecasts in February and August last year to reflect the rapidly changing economic conditions. November's economic growth estimate for 2024 at 2.2% was slightly lower than the 2.3% forecast in May and August. The think tank has kept its estimate unchanged in this year's report as exports are expected to continue to see a recovery. Total exports were estimated to grow 4.7%, up from KDI's original forecast as the chip sector shows signs of improvement. Concerns about external factors are slightly mitigated as the International Monetary Fund last month raised economic outlooks for major economies from its previous estimate released in October last year. China's economic growth was adjusted upward on the back of government stimulus measures despite the ongoing real estate crisis in the country. And growth in the U.S. economy is expected to boost South Korea's exports. The IMF also upgraded its outlook for the world economy to 3.1 percent, pointing to a more resilient growth in the global economy this year. Domestic demand, however, continues to remain sluggish amid a recovery in exports and improvements in the global economy. For consumer inflation, the KDI revised downward its forecast slightly to 2.5 percent from 2.6 percent. And private spending, which was also adjusted downwards by 0.1 percent, is not expected to show drastic improvement anytime soon. The current sluggishness in private consumption is attributed to the persisting high interest rates, hindering immediate improvement. It's unlikely to expect a boost in private consumption this year as high interest rates are likely to continue. And risk factors from geopolitical tensions in the Middle East that could lead to rising oil prices and trade disruptions might also weaken South Korea's economic growth. Lee Soo-jin, Arirang News. The price of groceries here in South Korea has increased by around 6 percent on year for the fourth consecutive month. According to data from Statistics Korea Monday, food prices were 6 percent higher in January than they were a year earlier. And that on-year rise is down 0.1 percentage points from December's on-year figures. But it's more than twice the size of the increase in total consumer prices, which is up 2.8 percent on-year. Surging fruit prices due to a shrinking supply caused by abnormal temperatures are seen as the major factor for these soaring food prices. And along with the recent uncertainties over global oil prices, government officials say the consumer price inflation rate could possibly increase in the first half of this year. Now, over in the U.S., price hikes did moderate in the first month of 2024, but by less than expected. High housing costs were responsible for two-thirds of the 3.1 percent gain. And the latest figure also suggests inflation is yet to be tamed. Yoon Jin has the details. 
The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reported on Tuesday that the U.S. Consumer Price Index, a broad-based measure of the prices shoppers face for goods and services across the economy, increased 3.1 percent on-year in January, which was above the market expectation of 2.9 percent. On month, inflation fell 0.3 percentage points from December's reading of 3.4 percent, which is much slower than expected. Excluding volatile food and energy prices, so-called core CPI accelerated 0.4 percent in January and was up 3.9 percent from a year ago, unchanged from December. Shelter prices contributed mainly to the increase, with the index rising 6 percent on-year. Taking up about one-third of the CPI weighing, the index for shelter prices climbed 0.6 percent on the month. On a 12-month basis, shelter costs rose 6 percent. After closing at a new record high on Friday, the S&P 500 inched down 0.1 percent on Monday. And after the CPI inflation data was released, the S&P 500 fell sharply in Tuesday's stock market action, sliding a further 1.3 percent. The Dow Jones Industrial Average sank more than 520 points, or 1.4 percent, on Tuesday, its worst one-day percentage decline since March 22, 2023. And the Nasdaq Composite fell 1.8 percent. Still, the big three indexes were trading higher on-year. Fed officials expect inflation to recede back to their 2 percent annual target, largely because they expect shelter prices to decelerate through the year. But January's increase could be an obstacle for the central bank that's been looking to relax monetary policy, which is at its highest in more than two decades. Ian Jin, Arirang News. The EU's antitrust regulator conditionally approved Korean Air's acquisition of Asian Airlines on Tuesday, allowing the two South Korean air carriers to move one step closer to their merger. With approval from 13 countries and regions, the firms are now waiting for the final call from the U.S. Now, the EU's approval is conditional due to the Commission's concerns that the merger could harm competition. This means Korean Air needs to remedy the EU's concerns in both passenger and and cargo services. In passenger flights, Korean Air will able rival airline Tiwei, a low-cost carrier, to start flights between Incheon and Barcelona, Paris and Rome. Those four routes overlap with Asiana. Also, Korean Air will divest Asiana's global cargo business. The air industry forecasts that the divestment will take place no later than October this year. The commission said Korean Air can only implement the merger with Asiana upon a full compliance with these remedies. If the U.S. approves, Korean Air is expected to rank within the top 15 in passenger services and within the top 10 in cargo services globally. South Korean swimmers made history by proving themselves at the 2024 World Aquatics Championships. Hwang sun woo won the gold in the men's 200-meter freestyle at the World Championships in Qatar. His first-place finish made him the first South Korean swimmer to win a medal at three consecutive World Championships. Lee seung has this report. South Korean swimmer Hwang sun woo claimed the top podium spot on Tuesday after winning gold in the men's 200-meter freestyle event at the World Championships in Qatar. In the race at the Aspire Dome in Doha, Huang finished in 1 minute 44.75 seconds ahead of Donis Rapsis of Lithuania and Luke Hobson of the United States. Huang had the quickest reaction time off the blocks with 0.62 seconds and was ahead until the 150-meter mark when Hobson took the lead from the South Korean. Huang, however, took over in the final stretch, passing Hobson in the final seconds to win his first career world title. His latest gold medal finish makes him the first South Korean to win a medal at three straight swimming world championships as he won silver in the 200-meter freestyle two years ago and followed that up with a bronze last year. Huang's medal was South Korea's fourth in Doha, the most the country has won at a single world championship. On Monday, Kim Woo min won gold at the men's 400-meter freestyle, while South Korea picked up two bronze medals in diving. Huang will now compete in the men's 100-meter freestyle event and the 4x200-meter freestyle relay with hopes of more medals in Doha. Lee Seung-jae, Arirang News. 
And South Korean swimmer Kim Woo Min won the country's first World Aquatics Champions in over a decade. He won gold in Doha on Sunday local time in the men's 400-meter freestyle. It's South Korea's first goal at the World Aquatics Championships since Park Tae Hwan in 2011. Kim touched the wall with his personal best of 3 minutes 42.71 seconds, outpacing Australia's 2022 world champion Elijah Winnington by 0.15 seconds. That is all we have for this week. We thank you for watching weekly news highlights. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.